Our verse today is John chapter 3, verse 14. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Nicodemus, a Pharisee and member of the Jewish ruling council, had approached Jesus at night and acknowledged him as a rabbi from God. Jesus told him, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Confused as to what being born again is, Jesus added that just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Being a Pharisee, Nicodemus would understand this reference to Moses and the bronze serpent in Numbers chapter 21, verse 8. The Old Testament events Jesus referred to occurred during Israel's wandering period in the wilderness following their exodus from Egypt and prior to their entry into the Promised Land. God sent poisonous snakes among them as punishment for their obstinacy, stubbornness, rejection, and complaints against him and against Moses. The snakes bit the people, and many of them perished. Afterwards, Moses interceded for them when they repented, and God commanded him to set a fiery serpent on a standard so that anyone who was bitten and looked at it would survive. The serpent symbolized both God's anger and his mercy. In addition to meaning to lift up, the Greek verb hypsothesitai also implies to exalt or to make great. So instead of bringing them death, when those bitten looked at the serpent lifted up, they were saved. This image prefigures what must happen to Jesus as the new Israel will be saved by gazing at the crucified Christ who hangs on the cross of shame and transforms it into the source of our salvation. It fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 52 verse 13 that the Son of Man must be lifted up. Hence, Jesus, the Son of Man, would be lifted up, see John chapter 8 verse 28, and will draw all men to himself, see John chapter 12 verse 32 to 34, because he bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, for by his wounds we are healed, see First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. Hence, John chapter 3, 15 says, We are to believe that we may have eternal life, like those who look up to the bronze serpent were saved from death. Therefore, as we mark the feast of the exaltation of the cross, Christians should not be ashamed of the cross or making the sign of the cross anywhere, even in the public. We are aware that the cross is a symbol of God's mercy for us, that He forgives, He loves and he cares for us to the point of death. It demonstrates how God can use anything and anyone for his glory. He alone can transform our stories from tragedy to triumph, from shame to glory, and from death to life. Let us therefore never stop emulating him on the cross and trusting in his love for us so that we may be inspired always to bear our crosses and follow him on the path of salvation. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for dying for us and saving us. Help us always to see you at work in our lives, even when things seem not to go our way. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you, and I wish you a lovely day.